What is nanoengineering? Nanoengineering is the use of materials whose physical size lie at the atomic and molecular level in the 1 to 100 nanometer range. The properties of these materials at these sizes are the enabling feature of nanoengineering. The images at the right provide some examples as to how materials and devices are being developed on a scale that is comparable to the nanoscale realm where cell cellular transport and genetic processes occur in the biological world. One of the applications of nanoparticles and nanostructures is in the transport of drug payloads that can be tailored to target disease regions of the body and to deliver medication specifically to those regions. What do nanoengineers do? Nanoengineers control matter on the molecular scale to manipulate processes that occur on the scale of nanometers and exploit the unique properties of nano-sized materials for new functionalities and capabilities. Besides its use in medicine and drugs, nanoengineering influences many other areas of science and technology, including energy, biotechnology, nano device development, optics, defense and security, cosmetics, and fabrics and textiles. How small is a nanometer? One nanometer equals one thousandth of a micron or one millionth of a millimeter. It is 10 to the minus nine meters or one billionth of a meter. In comparison to things in nature, consider that the size of an ant is approximately five millimeters. A dust mite is much smaller at 200 microns. The width of a human hair is 60 to 120 microns. A red blood cell is two to five microns. The nanoscale is much smaller on the order of the diameter of a DNA helix or roughly the width of three or four atoms. New functionalities of materials become possible as a result of moving into the nano size range. For example, consider a spherically shaped material of radius R. The volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the surface area to volume ratio is proportional to one over the size of the sphere. That is, as the size of the sphere decreases, the surface area to volume increases, and therefore surface properties can then dominate the material behavior. The ability to tailor the size, structure, or shape, and therefore the properties of nanomaterials offers excellent opportunities for revolutionizing a variety of fields, such as, for example, solar energy conversion, energy storage, and medical imaging diagnostics and therapeutics. Nanoscale materials are being evaluated to enable wearable electronics that convert bioprocesses and mechanical activity to energy, and also to develop sensors that provide environmental or biofeedback, improve energy conversion efficiency in solar cells, provide wear resistance in tires and lubrication in engines, to extend the life of lithium batteries and improve efficiency of fuel cells, improve precious metal catalytic activity, influence the wettability of glass and other materials for self-cleaning applications, lower the melting point of solders and also temperatures used in material processing and improve insulating capabilities of materials. Gold nanoparticles have been evaluated for medical imaging, diagnostics, and sensing capabilities due to their unique optical and electronic properties. In the very fine nanoscale dimensions, gold nanoparticles appear red, as seen in the image at the left. The color can change with the size and shape of the particles in the nanometer regime, as shown in the figure. This vial contains gold nanoparticles. Their appearance as red is due to their ability to absorb wavelengths in the green portion of the visible light spectrum. Red and green are complementary colors opposite each other on the color wheel. And when green is absorbed, the red is the color we see. This is demonstrated here by passing red light through the gold suspension. And we can see the streak of red light continuing on through the suspension unabsorbed. When we do the same with a green light, we don't see green light being transmitted very far into the suspension as a result of its absorption by the gold.
Like gold, silver nanoparticles can absorb or transmit various wavelengths of light in the visible light spectrum, producing a variety of colors. They too are finding uses for their unique optical and electrical properties. However, another benefit of silver is its antimicrobial property. Silver has long been used for wound care and as an antibacterial agent due to the interaction of the silver plus ion with microbes. In the image at the left, we observe how silver is delivered to a wound as a coating on a gold nano rod, as the gold provides the capability to image the affected area being treated. There are many chemical synthesis routes to producing nanoparticles. In this case, we are fabricating silver nanoparticles using a 0.1 molar solution of silver nitrate as our silver source, a 0.1 molar glucose solution, and a 0.2 weight percent solution of starch in deionized water. The glucose reduces the silver ions in the silver nitrate solution and the starch is present to coat the silver metal as it forms to prevent the silver from agglomerating and forming large particles. To evaluate our nanoparticles, we prepare scanning electron microscope samples by drying a drop of the silver suspension onto a silicon chip that's mounted to a specimen stub. The scanning electron microscope is a powerful tool for imaging objects less than a micron in size, which is typically the resolution limit of light microscopes. The electron microscope uses electrons to form an image. The electrons are drawn off a fine wire at the top of the scope and accelerated down the microscope column toward the sample, all the while being focused into a beam that is scanned across the surface of the sample. The signals generated from the electron sample interactions are used to form the image. We can observe how light interacts with our nanoparticles by using a visible light spectrometer. The main parts of the spectrometer are shown here. The light source emits wavelengths of light over the entire visible spectrum range. This light is passed through a device or prism that separates the light into its various wavelengths or colors. A movable slit then scans along the spectrum of wavelengths to individually allow each one to impinge upon the sample. A detector on the other side of the sample collects signals of the transmitted light that reaches it and generates a display of the intensity of the light signal coming through the sample as a function of the wavelength incident on the sample. In this way, we can see what wavelengths are absorbed or transmitted. In this example, we are looking at the amount of light that is absorbed as a function of the wavelength. We can see that there is a high absorbance in the region of the 400 nanometer wavelength. 